we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Yeah, we're brothers, sisters all. Every rung. <laughs> it's nice having the good old music, isn't it? Good morning, everybody. I'm Steve Melody, your pastor, and here comes that hum. We're working on it. Uh, we had the sound guy here this week. Things are getting better. We are working all that. I'm sorry for that. Stick around with us after worship. We're going to be making sandwiches for the Casa Maria soup kitchen, so I'm going to need those two front tables uh, cleared at the very end of worship and brought up here. The rest of you, wash your hands, get on the gloves, and let's make 400 sandwiches for some hungry people this week in Tucson. So join us right after worship and put your faith into action. We have lots of wonderful things going on in the life of the church. I'm going to trust that you're going to read through the calendar. You're going to read through the announcements. The best part of it is we are celebrating 13 new members in our church's life today. Some of them are able to be with us this weekend. Some are at our 8.30 service. Some will be with us at our 10.45 service. But I'm going to invite Sherry Goddard and Amy Tiggleman to come forward. I'm going to invite Ron and Julie Sharp to come forward. I'm going to invite Charlie and Jen Stretch and their family to come forward. And I think that's everybody. Oh, Kathy Bloxman to come forward as well. Um, if you'll all come join me up all the way up here. And if the rest of you would actually be quiet and listen. <laughs> oh, did I miss Jim and Janice Parks? I can't miss them. Come all the way up. Now we're fine. All right. Um, once you uh, read through their bios, um, I need you to forgive uh, Ron for his other wife named Amy. Um, <laughs> And actually what I need you to do is to forgive us who put it together because somehow their bio got all messed up. 
Um, and uh, Ron and Julie are actually the married couple, and uh, we don't know who Amy is. Um, and uh, maybe um, when we get to those commandments next week, you, 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 you ought to listen up. <laughs> the no lying and the no adultery kind of thing. You should listen next week when we get to that. <laughs> but I'm sorry for that, but it is just an absolute joy uh, to have you all have been worshiping with us and to come to a time when you're making a commitment to your life in this church. Um, it is a huge gift. Um, a lot of us stand for a lot of things in our lives. A lot of us put ourselves out there for things in our lives. And today, these people stand before us to say, we believe in God through Jesus the Christ, and we want to come to know God better through this congregation and make that commitment. And I think that's awesome. Um, because of all the things that you can stand up for, your faith is the most important. And how you do that is incredibly important. And so we welcome you into the family of Christ Presbyterian Church. Um, and know that um, you bring your experience of your life and your churches in the past, and we hope that you'll bring ideas uh, into the life of the church. And I know every once in a while you're still going to hear, well, we don't do it that way here. I'm going to start making church commandments. Thou shalt not say, we don't do it like that. Okay? Because new ideas bring new ways of worshiping and of growing our faith. New experiences allow all of us to grow in our faith with God and Jesus the Christ. And so um, our job together is to be that family together of God and to share our experiences of faith, of church, of not church, of the community, of the world, and, um, and just be together. You will be surprised where you will have the opportunity to share your faith. Uh, one of the members came to me this morning, and she was shopping in the... Uh, some store and some guy was packing the, the meat section and somehow they got into a discussion of faith and he said to her, are you a Christian? And she said, yes, I am. And are you a Christian? And yes, I am. And uh, um, he was looking for a church, so she told him about our church. Did you come? He didn't make it. Okay? But in the meat section of the grocery store, God gives us opportunity. Um, standing before all of these people, God is giving you opportunities to share your faith. So we ask you the questions of faith. Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? And do you trust in him? And do you intend to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love? And will you be a faithful member of this church, giving of yourself in every way? And will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? And do we receive these folks into the family of Christ Presbyterian Church, welcoming them into our lives together. Do we? Then let's pray. Gracious and holy God, thank you for adding to the numbers of this church these folks today. May your blessings not only flow to them, but flow through them. So that together, as the family of Christ Presbyterian Church, we can honor and praise and draw more people to you through Jesus the Christ, even as we come. And that means so many different things for so many different ones of us. And we're grateful for that incredible diversity that you give us within this church family. May all of our voices join together and praise your name now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Daphne's getting ready because next week Daphne gets to be baptized at the 1045 service as their family's coming in. Um, but let's welcome these uh, folks into membership. Y'all uh, need to know that Janice was my son's second grade teacher when we first moved to Tucson. How cool is that, huh? Right? And we hope you guys will stay more than two years. Uh, they're, they're in the Air Force running the show. We did it. Um, how great to have you all here. Um, let's welcome them again, and you can be seated. All right. 
we've had a time to focus on ourselves and on each other, let's get ourselves refocused just on God. I invite you to take an opening moment just on your own, to just be quiet, to think, to pray, and just build your own relationship with God. Let's take this opening moment of quiet prayer. The light of God in Jesus the Christ is always around us. But sometimes we get too busy to notice. So let's use this time of worship to focus on that light so that we can see it wherever we are, so that we can share that light with whomever we meet. Let's rise and sing our praise. There are loved ones in the glory Whose dear friends you often miss When you close your earthly story Will you join them in your bliss? Will the circle be unbroken? be seated. I want you to know I practiced my clapping with the band prior to worship. <laughs> it's not easy for me. It's not easy. Let's pray together. Gracious and holy God, how amazing you are. In the very beginning of things, you breathed life into us, making us somehow in your image. And wow, what an image you must be, because look at how different you made each of us. Help us to celebrate that difference just like you do. To love you, to love others, to even love ourselves. 
And may that love be infectious throughout a world that needs to know your grace and peace that we know of in Jesus our Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you again for all these folks who stood before us to claim and proclaim their faith in you. Give us chances to do that this week, Lord. We know we won't know exactly what to say, but may they at least see how much we love you because we know how much you love us. Lord, we are yours now and forever as we always have been. We come asking for your forgiveness for the mistakes that we make in our lives, despite the fact that we keep telling you we won't do it again. We come entrusting ourselves in the story, in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus our Savior, where your grace is fulfilled. Let that circle be unbroken so that we can share from generation to generation the good news of who you are. And in this time of offering, may what we give to this church continue to help us together to proclaim who you are in Jesus the Christ. For it's in his name that we pray. I see the long, quiet walk along the Underground Railroad. I see the slave awakening to the value of her soul. I see the young missionary and the angry spear. I see his family returning with no trace of fear. I hear the long, cold shadows of Calcutta nights. I see the sisters stand.
I was uh, walking into a store up through the parking lot recently. There was a young dad with two young boys uh, walking out of the store. You could tell there was a little bit of frustration going on in their lives, and they couldn't help but overhear the dad say, you do know that I know something. <laughs> and I laughed. <laughs> I remember my parents saying that to me. I remember saying that to my children. Parents do know something, right? Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. We're right in the midst of these Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. It's kind of fun to read this and to read commentaries. This is the first of the commandments that comes with some sort of promise with it. And I thought about that trip home for those boys. I'm not sure their life was going to be long-lived honoring your parents and listening to your mom and dad may give you a longer life, right? They brought you in, they can take you out. <clears throat> How many of us have known that? And yet what's interesting about these, this part of the Ten Commandments for uh, me in honoring your uh, mother and father is that this is one of the most misused and abused pieces of scripture in all the history of the world and in the history of the church generations, which is really what it's about. But generations have misused this piece of scripture. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. The early Jews, when they heard that Moses had come down with these commandments and, and heard Moses talk about this one that God had given them, honor your mother and father, they knew something deeper. Remember that it was given in the context of the Exodus experience, that 40 years they were traveling through the wilderness, right? That time period when well over a million people were traveling together with the hopes of giving to the promised land where God would make them again into a great nation. And for 40 years they had to travel. How many of you still have shoes that you've worn every day? For 40 years. How many of you are still wearing the same clothing every day for 40 years? Think about that. They had to run. When it was time to go and Moses said, it's time to go, they gathered just what they could carry. There wasn't much that they had with them. And they had to learn to trust God, that somehow God would provide food so that when the food that they had gathered ran out, they'd have food. And when the water that they could carry ran out, they could find water. And so every morning the manna appeared. And when they needed water, the rocks floated out. So when they heard this story, this commandment about honoring father and mother, they knew there was something deeper in this. Because they were on a 40-year journey. And I don't know about you, but at my age, traveling for 40 years every day in the same shoes and the same clothes, I'm going to get a little cranky and a little bit older. And I'm hoping that my kids would carry me. <laughs> my son's over there, if you didn't know which is not an easy thing to do, right? And in reality, the older generation in some ways became a burden to the younger generation who were still traveling for 40 years. And the older generation slowed them down. And that was a hard thing, right? So they knew the value of this commandment. Honor your father and mother. There was something deeper when you're traveling with your mom and dad for 40 years. 
that they heard and they understood. History, family, passing the faith from generation to generation, learning from the past, creating a better future. This was all understood by those early followers of God with this commandment. To have respect for that generation that's gone before. To learn from their wisdom and their life experience. Those are the people that were enslaved in Egypt and could tell the story again about crossing the Red Sea. They're the ones who had learned the story of what took the Israelites to Egypt in the first place, the famine. And passing all of that from generation to generation was important. The sense of respect was important. So to guard against a society that can sometimes see older folks as disposable and to help them learn from the past, God commanded them to honor their parents. And take a moment to notice that in the biblical Old Testament book of Exodus, the command is not to just honor your father. It's to honor your father and mother. And in a very patriarchal society where everything was traced through the dad and dad was in charge, God elevated the mom to the same status as the dad. The early followers knew something much deeper in this command. They also knew God as father and as mother. And the call to honor parents, they understood, was a call beyond just their earthly parents. It was a call to honor God, their parent, who also knows a thing or two. The first three commandments of putting God first, of having no images, of not using God's name in vain, and even the fourth commandment to keep the Sabbath, we're all about developing a relationship with this God as, as one of authority, one above us, as a parent who gave us life. And now the fifth command, to honor our parents, was given to us so that we would know how to live out that relationship with God, our parent. And not just our parents among us, but with God, our father, our mother. The word to honor comes from the Hebrew word that means weighty or heavy. It's used in times when you want to give something weight, something important, something that's more important than something else. God says, honor your mom and dad. Give them importance in your life. They're here to be your helper, to be your protector, to be your teacher to be your guide. Now notice that the command is not to obey, but to honor. Bless you. Just, just doing my job. And this is where I think the scripture has been misused and abused. People have taught us that to honor means to obey and do everything your mom and dad tell you. I think in original creation of parenthood, God intended parents to be good, to be loving, to be strong in their faith, and to desire to raise children to love God, to love others, and to love themselves. I had that. I was very lucky to have two incredibly wonderful, loving, faithful parents who saved the best for last. And I can look back and know that I had really good parents who gave me a solid foundation in living life. They wanted the best for me. My parents were very strict and inflicted sometimes punishments that might today be considered abusive. But that was the standard of the day. And I know even now as I look back, that they were loving and caring. So it's easy for me to understand the command and the value of the command to honor them, to give them great weight in my life. 
but we weren't all as blessed as I was. Some people had terribly abusive parents who broke more than one of the other commandments and who used their children as pawns for physical, mental, and emotional abuse. And I need to take some time to speak to those people now. Because of all the commands, this one seems the most difficult and unfair to follow if that's the kind of parent you have. But I remind you that the command is to honor, not to obey. Parents are supposed to be teachers and guides. And some of them were very good at that, in a good way. And some of them were very bad at that, in a bad way. Our parents are always teaching us. We're always teaching each other. And we have to decide what kind of teacher we're going to be. We learn from both kinds. From parents who are good and loving, and from parents who are abusive and awful. To those who grew up with parents who were abusive and told you that this commandment means that you have to do everything they tell you to do, even though you knew it was bad, I'm here to tell you today, your parents were wrong. They were wrong. They were not supposed to abuse you. They were supposed to love you and help you build a life that could be better than their own. The sad part is that most of us who were kids at one point in time understood this whole sense of giving weightiness to parents. And so there's this overarching sense of those who are older that we're supposed to respect our elders, right? They know more. They're looking out for us. They're doing what's right, even though we know they're doing what's wrong. And as children, we have less power. And most of the time, we're powerless against them. You cannot blame yourself for that part of your past. That is your parents' fault. They were wrong. What you need to do is accept the fact that your parents were wrong. And they were unfaithful. And they abused you. And I'm sorry and I understand the effect it has on our lives, no matter what age we are. They were wrong. To honor them means to understand that they were wrong. And whatever they did to you that was wrong, and for whatever reason they did it to you, you can try to spend your life to figure that out. And maybe you'll get some great insights, and maybe you won't. Just, just take a moment and understand today that your parents were wrong. And to obey them in that wrongness was the rest of our fault. Because we either didn't know, or we turned a blind eye. And we still do. And the call of the church today is to stand up for children who are in abusive situations and have less power or who are powerless against people who are abusing them and say, you are wrong and you may no longer do that. And that needs to happen not just for children, it needs to happen for people all over this globe who are in positions of less power or who are powerless. And we need to stand up for them and say that is not what it means to honor. The hard part about those of us who were abused as children by our parents is that someday you got to let it go. 
or it will all consume you forever. And you are far more bound to repeat it, not just for your kids if you happen to have them, but for yourself. And God, the good parent, loves you and wants all of the goodness of life for you. And if you're going to continue in that thought that you have to obey your parents even when they're abusing you, then you will continue in a life pattern where you will abuse yourself. And you need to stop that. And simply honor who you are. Give yourself the weight that God gives you. And give the weight to God, your great parent, who laid down his life for you that you might live free forever. You hear the difference? This honoring parents, for some of us, is very easy, and for some of us, is a lifelong struggle. But it never meant to obey. Sometimes we parents don't get it right. And in those cases, you need to admit it and stand up and say, it was wrong. And then you honor them. Simply by recognizing that's who they are. And that does not have to mean that's who you are. Because you could be somebody different. When you look to God through the story of who Jesus is and what he's done for You are beloved, as all we are, forever and ever. And when, when you come to that understanding, you can let go of the difficulty of the past. Though the memories haunt you. You never get over that stuff. But you get through it different than if you hang on to it. The command is to honor. And that we must do. Because the depth of the command is to truly honor God as the most important one in our life. And to do as God calls us. Because God is all loving and will never abuse us. God is the one who lays down his life for us that we might have it forever. Thank God. Amen? Amen. As we come into a time of prayer for each other, lots going on in uh, people's lives in our church. Uh, you will see the uh, prayer list and the uh, inside of your bulletin. I hope that you'll take time and look at those. Eve had back surgery, went really well. When I saw her Friday afternoon, she was sitting up on her bedside having lunch. Hallelujah, right? Stan McPherson had some heart stuff done. He's doing really well. He's at home and being Mr. Independent again. Hallelujah. Paula Johnson had some neck surgery, came through it really well, and she's home as well. Mel Hillman, uh, had hip replacement surgeries, had some challenges with low blood pressure, so he's been in the hospital a few extra days. They're still working with that to help him regain his strength. Luann Cobb had foot surgery. She's doing really well and is recuperating at home. And I got a text uh, late afternoon yesterday. Daryl Dunifan is in St. Joseph's Hospital. He's having some challenges with his heart again, um, and so they're doing some testing even this morning. Uh, so I texted Daryl about 7 this morning. I said, I just want you to know while we're in worship, we're going to be praying for you. So let's keep Daryl in our prayers. Let's pray together. Sometimes, God, we get all caught up in our earthly life and we forget that you are leading us to something grander. Thank you for the good and faithful parents in life. 
And we give you those who were abusive. May we figure out ways to honor them both and know that that's who they are and we can be who we need to be. Learning from the wonder and from the mistakes of others gives us a chance, God, to be more faithful to you. Help all of us as grown-ups be good and faithful parents, whether they're our own children or somebody else's, to protect those who need protection, to call out sin where it is, and to grow more deeply in love with you as you are so deeply in love with us. Thank you for the successful surgeries and the recoveries that are coming to Eve and to Stan, to Paul, to Mel, and to Luann. And this morning, as Daryl undergoes some other procedures trying to figure out what's wrong, may he feel your healing Holy Spirit all around and within. And Lord, listen to us all now. Whether we speak these names out loud or we hold them quietly within our minds, these are folks who need to know that you're with them. Hear their names. And surround them with awareness of your gracious, loving presence that brings life free and abundant. We are sorry for the mistakes we've made. May the rest of our living show you we mean that in our loving. Use even us, O oh God, to share your word of hope and grace in Jesus the Christ. And tie us together from generation to generation through the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise. <laughs> Some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll lie away to Celestial shore, I fly away.
part of life doesn't last forever. The next one does. Take what you learn in this life and make it as best as you can for yourself and for others. Honor God. God is our parent. Learn to honor each other and the weightiness of other people's experience. And find your own way to freedom and peace in God. And then give that to others and make sure they have it too. Then we'll all have it. And we'll all fly away. Amen. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away when I die. We're doing the sandwiches so we can get the tables pulled up and we got a few minutes and then come join us making sandwiches. New members and sessions, we're in the patio room at 10. And a new member wanting a tour 9.30 outside the patio room. Children's help will slowly go. 